Good day. Welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Putnam Family and Community Services. I'm Eric Gross, your host, along with three members of the Putnam Family and Community Services staff. Doreen Lockwood. Doreen, welcome. Thank Jason you. Mastropolo and Deborah Flynn Capalbo. Good seeing you folks today. Doreen is the Director of Chemical Dependency Services. And Doreen, as Director, I understand there are two main components to those services. What are they? Yes, there are, Eric. The first is our treatment component, where we provide treatment services to individuals who have alcohol or substance abuse related problems in their family, in their work, with school, with the legal system. We provide assessments um, to determine where that person might need, uh, what kind of services they may need. We provide individual counseling, group counseling, family counseling. We also have the ability to provide psychiatric evaluations, uh, medication management, and addiction medication to assist people in their therapies. Um, in addition, we have prevention services, which are school-based prevention services in the Maya Path, Putnam Valley, Garrison, um, and in a daycare center in Brewster, where we provide um, practices that assist young people in learning to solve problems, decision-making, coping skills, how to address issue issues such as bullying, um, and those are the two components of the services that we have. Jason, as Director of Rehabilitation Services, what services do you oversee? Well, I have two programs. Uh, one is case management, which is now being called care coordination and pros. In case management, we have case managers who are going out into the community and really helping folks with mental illness stay in their homes, avoid hospitalization, and really get involved in the community. What's nice about the program is we're full up on engagement services, really getting the client to want to go out into the community and rely on natural resources that are out there, not just uh, mentally ill resources. Um, and in our PROS program, what we offer is over 50 groups um, a week that a person can pick and choose from. Um, and we're serving, again, the mentally ill and also the mentally ill who might have a substance abuse problem. Um, so they're picking these groups based on um, the different needs and coping skills that we can meet for them, uh, that they can um, have a higher quality of life, that they can find a, a job, that they can go back to school, that they can have better relationships with the people uh, that uh, they love and want to be with. Um, and I think one of the best things about PROS is it's not just a, one big program on site. We also have vocational services that enable us to go out and help people get jobs in the community and help people keep their jobs in the community. So they have a vocational piece, the clinical piece, and, and a rehabilitation piece. Deborah, as director of the mental health services, what programs fall under your umbrella? A lot of programs do fall under the mental health clinic. First of all, we do have the mental health clinic itself, which services children, adolescents, and adults. We have individual, we have group therapy. We have licensed clinical social workers. We have psychiatrists on staff. We offer um, family counseling. We offer anxiety, phobia. We offer different skills-based groups. We have a lot of different um, mechanisms to help you cope with everyday stressors. We get people from all different walks of life coming in there. Also under the clinic, we have children's services, which we've grown dramatically over the last year and a half. We have the RISE program, which is an OMH granted program, which services children. It's a free program to everybody in Putnam County, zero to 18. We can do assessments in the home, in the clinic, in the schools. Also under the clinic is Family Empowerment, mm. which is a program that we work with mandated preventive services through the county and DSS. We have Family Support and Advocacy, which is wonderful. It's been there for years and years. It's able to help families come together. We help them in schools. We help them with problems. We coordinate services. There's Relatives as Parents, which is under Family Support and Advocacy. We have many parents who've given up custody of their children to relatives and grandparents, so we have supports for them. We have Parenting Journey, and we have Common Sense Parenting, which also falls under Family Support and Advocacy, groups to really help families stay together and work. We have Coordinated Children's Services, which is under there, which coordinates all these services for Putnam County. So there's something for everybody. Yes, we, we sort <laughs> of encompass everything. <laughs> Chemical dependency, we know, is in the news nowadays. You pick up the paper every day, turn on the radio, watch television, more and more problems are focusing. Is such the case in Putnam County? Yes. 
Um, right now in our treatment program, I would say that 25% of the people admitted to our program are using prescription drugs or opiates, which is a national and statewide and local epidemic. We've seen many deaths from prescription drugs right here in our community. There's also an increase um, of marijuana use. I would say 41% of our clients use marijuana. Um, our clients are really between the ages, the majority of our clients are between the ages of 18 and 34. And I have a big concern about both of those issues. Clearly the prescription drug epidemic is very dangerous because I think young people are under the illusion that because a prescription medication is prescribed by a doctor, it's safe, but they're very physiologically addicting and can lead to death. And with regards to the increase in marijuana, our society right now is sending a very mixed message to young people about marijuana. We're saying our prevention services and treatment services, we're saying marijuana is bad for you. And then nationally, we're saying let's make marijuana legal for sick people. There's a real double mixed message, and we're seeing an increase in the use of marijuana. And um, it's not a harmless drug. Most of the folks that end up using prescription drugs and heroin started out with the gateway drugs, which are cigarettes, alcohol, and marijuana. And people forget that. Uh, so it's a, a big cause for concern. Folks will come into our program um, because they are having different problems in different areas of their lives. One young lady came who was a mom who had multiple DWIs, uh, did not have custody of her children, had mental health issues that were not addressed. And she was able to come into treatment in our treatment program and our mental health program and win back the trust of her family, her children, her self-confidence, get appropriate medication, become sober, go back to work and become a part of the community. So the beauty of Putnam Family is that someone could come into one program and utilize the services of other programs such as parenting or case management. And another important issue, Eric, is that alcohol and substance abuse issues and mental health issues do not discriminate. They do not depend on whether you're a male, a female, you're 10 years old, you're 20 years old, what your socioeconomic status is. Many people need help for these issues. So we really want the community to know that we're here to help and our doors are open to everyone. You know, we hear about going down uh, generation to generation. Is substance abuse hereditary? It can be. We see many families that have intergener intergenerational substance abuse. I looked at my program statistics before coming and probably 30% of the individuals in our program come from families where there were alcohol and substance abuse issues. It, it really depends. That's not always the case. Mm -hmm. Some folks develop these issues and problems and there's no history of alcohol or substance abuse, but there can be a strong genetic factor and hereditary component. So in addition to people with a substance abuse problem, what groups will utilize Putnam Family and Community Services? Well, you have uh, the severely and persistently mentally ill. You have um, folks who are uh, young, the younger under eight, age 18 who uh, uh, are classified as having severe emotional disturbances. Um, the care coordination would serve both, uh, both those populations. Um, and a lot of uh, our pros folks are involved um, with uh, the courts in, in some way or uh, with um, the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also, um, also have that, men that severe and persistent mental illness and have uh, chemical dependency issues. It was discussed before how the organization works with the schools. This would be an ideal opportunity for the schools, the agency to work together to help the young people. You say they're starting in, the, in 18 years old, nip it in the bud before it does develop into something more serious. Absolutely. And I think that's why the children's care coordinator works so well with the mental health clinic and coordinating those services, including RISE. All right, communication is imperative throughout the, the agency. We are actually starting um, clinic in Head Start in Brewster based on the need that we've been seeing over the last year and a half. There's such a need to start when the children are really small. And also the people coming into the clinic are just people that are facing situational things. They've lost their job. People are struggling parenting. There's more drugs and alcohol in the families. There's more domestic violence. And it's trickling down to the children. So more children are coming in. They're acting out in school. They're having tantrums. They're having crises. We, we do crisis also intervention for the schools. The schools utilize us during the day for crises if something arises. But we're finding a lot of disconnect in the families now based on all the changes that have happened. A lot of it's from the economy, but people that just sometimes need to walk in and have situational depression are coming in. And we find that if 
a parent may have it, a child may have it, and that's what we're picking up a lot more in the community. And we're referring also, we refer parents that have substance abuse issues. They can have, you know, two, two diagnoses at one time. Jason's group, the care coordination, we have intensive case management for children. So many of our children in the clinic also have case managers or care coordinators now. So it's, it's great, we're really blending, and we talk all the time, we call team meetings, we work with the Depart Department of Social Services, so we have like a real comprehensive care system. So a whole family can come in for help? Yes. Yes. Mom, dad, brother, sister, etc. Do you have many families like that? Yes, we do. We have um, a family that the mom and dad have alcohol and substance abuse issues, so they're in the substance abuse program. Uh, they also are able to see our, our program doctor for medication, and they will be then transferred to the mental health services when they're finished. They also um, benefit from our family empowerment program, which provides parenting services and in-home skill building for parents. Um, this particular family doesn't need case management, but if they did, we would have the luxury of also having case management available. And also parents um, can take um, the parenting journey and common sense parenting classes. What kind of problems do you see in the mental health clinic? It's really, it's minimal to sometimes that people have been in, in treatment for a long time. People come in at maybe their first episode of depression. We may see children coming in that are bullied in school, and this has been going on for a year or two, and they're very sad, they're very anxious, and they're very depressed. Children come in, their parents are separating or being divorced. Adults come in that really have been afraid to come for a while, and they just make that initial intake, which will yield sometimes referrals to different programs. So there's not really one type of person who comes into the clinic. It's really for anybody to come in. So it's really for the first time person coming in, or someone who's been in, in treatment for a long time to stay with us for individual or group therapy. Jason, what about the rehabilitation services? Same <coughs> scenario? Well, uh, our, our folks have, um, some of, for some of them, it's their first psychotic break. Um, they don't know what's going on, what, what's wrong, um, and so we will really try to engage them with, with educational uh, materials and let them know that, uh, but also letting them know you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. um, then we have other folks who they've been in the mental health system, um, backwards hospitals for years and years, and, and um, are, fi are finally realizing that there's more to life than just being a patient, that they can um, live a full life despite having a mental illness with that is making them hear voices or keep uh, having their moods go up and down so much that they can't function. You know, you mentioned this, this episode. What, who makes that referral? Does the, does the person call 225-2700? Go to 1808 Route 6 in Carmel? Does the police officer, who, who, who makes that referral initially? It could be anyone. It could be um, the person walking in off the street and saying, I need help. It, and you have that? Yes, yes. We, ha we, we have that. Um, it could be um, a teacher calling saying that their student is acting funny and they're not sure what's going on. Can, can you folks assess? And, and we do that at the, all the, the time. The, the, uh, in all the departments. <coughs> right. um, it could be a doctor, a hospital saying that we, um, we just help stabilize this person and they're, and, um, they're gonna need ongoing services. Um, it could be a physician, uh, a primary care physician. It could be a school um, or ho hospital. Or, or I would say our main referral basis, but it can be anyone. So you guys work in relationship with many other agencies in Putnam County, yes. public schools, et cetera. We are connected to every agency in the county, the criminal justice system, the courts, the schools, the Department of Social Services, the police just came in the other day for our assistance with helping them get someone in the hospital. Um, there's a real community effort here in Putnam County because all of our providers work together to best meet the needs of our citizens. And as Diane told us on our last program, one in 14 residents of this county sought help last year, over 7,000 patient contacts. In a small county like Putnam, that's amazing. Yeah. That's true. In our prevention program, Eric, we touch about 2,500 students a year, and each student will have up to 10 prevent alcohol and drug prevention messages um, in their life in the classroom. And one of the things we know that the research tells us is the earlier you do any kind of intervention and prevention, the less likely a young person would be to develop an alcohol or substance abuse problem or a serious mental right. health problem. So the early intervention and screening services we provide, you know, are really going to help people in the long run. Now, funding, of course, is a problem. Always. Always. We talked about fundraising, et cetera. 
what you don't even want to suggest that programs might be cut or reduced or whatever, but what would happen if some of these programs go by the wayside? It's funny you ask that question because I was asked that question. We receive funding from the Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services, the Office of Family and Children via the Youth Bureau in our county and from Putnam County, and I was asked that question. And my answer to that question was that we would see an increase in homelessness probably, an increase in hospitalizations, an increase in people entering the criminal justice system when in actuality they would need to be in the treatment system. We may see an increase in death as well. Um, so our services are really vital to the community. It would be really scary to me uh, what it would be like here in our county if people didn't have the ability to walk through our doors or call us and come in for, for the services that we provide. There would be a real gap uh, a hole here. I, I think the community resources um, would be flooded. Uh, the jail system w w would be flooded. The Department of Social Services would be flooded. I mean, not to mention the bleak outlook for the individual that we're not mm -hmm. serving anymore and, and, and the sense of hopelessness that, that would um, be a detriment to their lives. Um, but the person, uh, the average person on the street of Putnam County would definitely see um, more people homeless muttering around and talking to themselves, uh, it's, it would be a ble very bleak indeed. You know, when you think that this is the only agency of its kind right. in the county. We provide amazing. crisis coverage. That's the, we are 24 hours. We're covering crisis also. So if we weren't there, it would be the sheriff's department or law enforcement that would de be dealing with many of these crises that go on. And it's unfair to place that burden on them. You know, one simple call to us, we can make another call. We call the hospital. We network all the time. We're always using everybody and we're networking. If we can't do it at that moment, we bring someone in. I've held people in the office for eight to 10 hours until eight we can figure out hours. where to hospitalize them. I've had, one night I had four children and three out of four had to be hospitalized. Oh this went on until 10 o'clock at night. It started, I guess, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. So at, at 10 o'clock, the last child was hospitalized. So we work with all the local hospitals and everything, too, to really do our best. It's better to have a child come to us and then be sent somewhere directly than to wait in an ER. You know, it's very intrusive for that. And it's scary. So we want to do the best we can for the young, you know, the adolescents.